Did you sleep well? Yeah. You don't seem convinced. There were lots of mosquitoes, so I slept with this on my head. <laughs> like a mummy. And with my hood on. I pulled my hood up so that I will create more space and that the netting wouldn't be right against my nose, because any contact means getting bitten. And given the length of my nose, there is bound to be contact. <laughs> to cap it all, I forgot to put in my earplugs. It was a mosquito fest all night. But you, dirty rat, you kept your earplugs for yourself. Of course I put my earplugs in. You selfish person, you. But I figured it was tough enough to sleep as it was. <laughs> But I wanted to hear, because I noticed at one point there was a guy who thought he could sleep here. He started checking the door. I was scared. I was jabbing you with my elbows. I didn't wake up. Yeah, I see how well you were protecting your family. <laughs> Look, I had grabbed my thing here, because you weren't doing anything. So I just had this in case. With that and the cat urine, we would have been totally gassed. I thought it would be better not to use it, but just in case. When the guy started checking the door to get in, I said, oh. <laughs> he must have been surprised to hear a woman's voice, especially speaking French. Maybe some people find it surprising that I am continuing, even though I'm pregnant, that it's not a wise thing to do. But when I think of all the women I met in Africa, I could decide to stop, but that's something they can never do. There are lots of things we saw, lots of things people shared with us that we couldn't film because they were too private and we didn't want to intrude on our host with our shameless camera. It's a question of respect. More than the men, it was the women who took us in, fed us and quenched our thirst during these three years of walking. Come to your room and oh, thank you. got a small room, and not finished. Well, it will be, anyway, it will be perfect. Yeah. They always behave like mothers towards us. You mean this, oh. this palace? <laughs> uh, you mean that we will sleep in this, this room? <laughs> These women are so brave, so resilient. They carry the continent on their shoulders. Half the world's sea traffic passes through here. All the oil headed for Europe or the United States transits through this canal. We received a special permission to go through Rafa, a checkpoint overlooking the Gaza Strip. It saved us an extra 300 kilometers of walking to get into Israel. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, now we are leaving uh, Rafa Terminal on the way to Kerem Shalom because we are on the border and we have uh, Palestinian villages on the way. We have to drive in a special anti-bullet car. Like, like this one? Like this one. These this is all... Palestine on this side and These Egypt are... on this side. That's right. These are all the uh, Palestinians' uh, uh, houses and places. Houses, yes. In this way, this road, you have to you have to drive with a special car. Okay. How many kilometers? It's about three kilometers. So you make us cheat three kilometers? Yes. <laughs> no problem. symbolic walk in the footsteps of mankind will soon be over, and today we are taking our first steps into this land. A land three times holy, but so divided, so torn apart. It requires a lot of courage for those who live here to dream of anything beyond war. Yet, things could change. One day, near the start of our walk in South Africa, we came across a school that no one would have thought possible before Mandela came to power, only seven years before. We found white and black children sitting on the same benches, the future of a country that has to recover from 300 years of segregation. The most encouraging part was that this school had been founded and paid for by white farmers. We can only hope that one day, Israelis and Palestinians will be able to coexist in peace. Images from all our experiences are crowding into my head. I'm having trouble believing it's almost over. I'm thinking about all these women who confided in me, some of whom envied me my freedom. As one of them, I was accepted into their communities and they sometimes let me film their secret rituals. In the Sudan, for example, they invited me to attend a Tsar ritual. During these exclusively female gatherings, all the taboos weighing them down are lifted. They can smoke, drink, have fun. They are free to express all the demons gnawing away at them. They forget about their husbands who bully them or who take a second wife. They forget that they were circumcised and infibulated at age five. Their greatest strength is that despite all their problems, they never lose hope. We are remembering each and every link in the chain of hospitality and support and all the saviors of the day who allowed us to make it to this point. It is to them that we dedicate our walk and to whom we are indebted. I don't feel like shouting. Mine is a serene joy, as if it wasn't over, as if we were going to carry on walking forever. <laughs> <laughs> 